All right, hi everybody. It's Bonkai Nights when two freaking in this magic chapter view. Holy shit! Okay, listen. I know what I said about the winter. I said origami. I said wizard bars. I don't know, man. Hamatora, yo, Hamatora. That shit was crazy. Like I said, next week, majority of the stuff from the fall and the winter will be finished. Expect some crazy ass reviews, especially for Hamator. Because that shit went hard in the paint. Yo! Like I said, next week, the final episode. Could I, I? I don't know. Maybe ha I think Habitor might be the best of the season. I, I think it trumps Noragami. I think it trumps Noragami. I can't believe I'm saying that. But anyway, middle of time. Maggie chapter review. Um, chapter two eighteen. Basically, what happened in this chapter? Um. We have Sheba, and she finds a new friend in Momo. This, this, the, um, those cat creature things. And she made a friend called Momo of another species, and they become close friends, and so on and so forth. And basically, um, one of the, um, of, of uh, Solomon's, Remembers is saying, so you have learned the Manicor's language already. And so on and so we got this one guy with the eye patch grabbing the girl's tit. That was that was kind of weird. But um saying one of them saying that we should entrust that thing to the Manicor tribe without waiting for the other leaders to show up. And he's like, and he ring and Solomon says exactly. And then we basically have Sheba and Sheba's real cute. This was this was this was a cute scene with her. She was going around with Momo and stuff. And but it gets really dark later on. It gets really fucked up later on. So and and and, and Sheba basically sees um the graves and um and when and she asks you know Momo where's your father and he died. And then she, she's based, Momo's basically telling her, Sheba, that he would, he went crazy because of the towers. And saying that she's really sad. And Sheba basically is thinking to herself, oh, it's my fault. Because she was the one, she was one of the, she was part of that group. That were in the towers and we were controlling the other species. And it's her, her fault and everything. And she's being put to blame. But then she's like saying it's not exactly her fault. There were other magicians in that tower as well. And she understands how... How, you know, she sees the graves and everything. So she understands that she seemingly is to blame for what has occurred to her family and everything. And um and she was about to tell her the truth, but she wasn't able to. Essentially. And um then like I said, and overall this episode, this chapter, I'm gonna give a five and five. Oh really because what happened in the end. That that was that was that's really crazy. And, you know, she, she basically informed Solomon about that situation, about what, that he was, she was unable to do that, um, that caused Momo's father's death. Um, and she brings up to Solomon that she, that didn't tell Momo, I ended up hating myself, hating herself, and I could just imagine how it would be sad for them. And Solomon just brings up the fact that she was 
that Shiva would once say that these beasts were, were beasts and needed to be killed and everything. And now, you know, how you feel now about it. And he basically brings up the fact that I like you now. And she's crying and shit. And this was, this was a really touching moment. And, and someone bring, basically brings up, from now on, you will have an opportunity to apologize to them. And he's like, what do you mean? And then, all of a sudden, we see the Matacors and... They are marching on them. All fucked up and shit. I'm like, what? It wasn't long ago they were back in the village where they were. Oh my god. In the background you have these, um, oh my god. This is crazy. Stealth bombers? I'm like, yo, where did this become, like, yo... I don't know, you know, I don't know stealth bombers existed, Maggie. <laughs> it was, it's kind of crazy there. But, essentially, we see this guy, and he's saying, we are the air fleet. Um, he's like, also be able to use mind destruction magic from the Gunind, Gunind, and control the other species. And she's like, why? Just a moment ago, they were, they were you know... Smiling and everything. Why are they doing such a cool thing to them? And then she sees Momo and it's and Momo's all fucked up. I'm like, yo. That was just like And she's like she was asking him, you knew this was going to happen, so why? And she's looking at Solomon and everyone else, because like she thinks they're to blame. And he's like, it's not our fault. You, you, it was you. You know, this is the scene you have seen so many times from the tower, right? You did the exact same thing. One, the one, two years while feeling good inside of that room, while sneering at them. You prostate. You, they came to discuss you, and you continue to recklessly break their minds. And then she's, she's really like, you know, she's thinking about it and how what she did basically. Having them kill each other. And then she's like... And she sees Momo saying, stop, stop. And she's saying, you are the real villains here. And they're like, what? You are the ones who saved the worst person in the world. The one who did things that would never be forgiven. The great sinner who should die. You saved me. And she's like pounding on the ground. She says, why didn't you kill me? I should have died in that room. Why did you save me? And basically, they basically leave. They're leaving. Uh, Solomon's you know, households and stuff. Saying, because we did not have the right to just die in that room. And then he brings up the fact that they all, every one of them, was like Shiva. They all were in those towers. Go figure. <laughs> so, they were all in those towers. And and basically saying, to die, to die just like that would be half-hearted. We still have things to do as long as we live. And saying, yes, we all are people who lent their power to those towers and survived. We are all great sinners. And they all just stand in there. Good, 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 good page there with them all standing there. And there's the guy saying, no, you're the blasphemers. And this guy is, is a dick. He needs to be taken down. Um, those who fell from divine grace, the avatars of the divine stops. And we see Solomon with the eye glowing in the middle of his head. And we just see the bomber. Oh! It just says the extreme magic battle will begin in the next issue. That, <laughs> you know, this is the thumbnail. Like, how? And that basically happens in a chapter. But how the hell are we going to have bombers? <laughs> Yo, I was like, bombers? Stealth bombers? Like... Like, I expect that, I mean, I mean, okay, there was this, in, um, for example, Capillion, that was a stealth bomber, okay, but that's Capillion, this is Maggie, this is about magic and shit, so, was there, like, is this, like, technology, 
it just didn't make any sense. Because, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, and it's just weird looking. Stealth bombers. I, I just don't know where to go with that. So, so, because, like, it's just, oh, man, it's just so weird that way. I need stealth bombers. They better, they better be, like, doing some kind of magic, these stealth bombers. I, I don't want to see just bombs all over the place. But, um, that's pretty much what happened in the chapter. That, that, that stealth bomber thing was too crazy. And just, oh, man, so, that was, I'm convinced now that mana cores, they have some strong connections with the finalists. They have some strong connection with the finalists. What I think might happen, though I'm not sure, I think Solomon does something. There's got to be some kind of connection here where Solomon does some kind of thing later on where he sends the mana cores, or, or more to a point, he's able to manipulate the DNA of the manacores, or something along those lines, and he manipulates it to have it where they go from being that to humans, and the humans are the finalists. Tell me what you guys think about that theory, because it just seems too... I, I, I see a strong resemblance between the manacores and the finalists. No, so yeah, I just it's just it's just there. It's 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 there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the story, people. Uh, nothing else to add about this magic chapter, but that pretty freaking messed up how that went down. It was just like, oh man, they were just not too long ago. They were she was talking to Momo, and all of a sudden, shh, crazy, crazy shit. Um, a certain comment, by the way. Happened in my Hunter Hunter episode review. I'm not going to mention it. I'm not going to say what it's entailed. But anybody wants to know about it, go to my video and you'll see it. Um, But yeah, that's pretty much it. Sorry, people. Bonkai Night 22. I'll see you guys later. By the way, I read two mangas recently. Both endorsed by hockey. Yes. Oshaku Hockey endorses both these mangas. Tokyo Ghouls. Oh my god, Tokyo Ghouls, man. Awesome. And Tokyo, we we'll both have Tokyo in the title. Tokyo Ghouls and Tokyo ESP. By the way, go read Tokyo ESP. Go read it. It's a good read. It's a good read. Um, getting an anime for the summer. So yeah, just have to mention those two things. Other than that, nothing else to add. Bonkai 922. See you guys later. Still thinking about that Avatar episode. Ah, it's fucking crazy. We'll see what happens next week on Maggie. Should be interesting. See you guys later. Peace out.